Welcome back to another exciting edition of The Untold with my favorite co-host. Amazing. It's I threw amazing. so many people under the bus by saying that. Hussain <laughs> Lajuz, <laughs> how are you, my friend? I'm great, Ahmed. How are you? Today is a different episode. We're going to go into yes. the world of horse Horses. riding. Exactly. And I've been hearing you've been wanting to get on top of a horse. And I will. I promise. Very soon. Very yeah? soon. Very soon. Hopefully. What makes soon. you want to have that experience? Because I was on one in Egypt and I almost uh, fell. I want to. I want to. I want to make it go right. So I know. Uh, I want to okay, make my experience okay, go right. You wanna, okay. Okay. No, I think it was. It's a beautiful, beautiful experience. It is. It is I a beautiful it, experience. Honestly. It is. And I hope you actually learn the proper way. Uh, I think we'll learn today. And we'll learn more okay. with our guest right after this. We're back from the break and we can finally welcome Ala Sultan. How are you today, Ala? I'm good. Welcome All good. to the show. Thank you for being on the Untold. Yeah. Uh, very unique experience that you have, very unique story that you have. Uh, you're someone into horse riding, you're a champion, you're a judge, and you have, you have so many accomplishments. We're very exci- excited to get to know them, very curious to get to know them. So I think Ahmed and I always start with a question, like if we were to ask Ala, like what's the untold story of Ala? Like how did it all begin? Who are you today? Um, first of all, thank you for having me uh, here today, and uh, I'm sure uh, my story is gonna be similar to uh, quite a few in, in yeah. this uh, in, in this horse riding uh, community. Um, I started riding since maybe the 1993. And what uh, age were you like? Uh... Um, compared to other riders, I actually started fairly late. I mean, oh. a lot of riders start at six or seven years old. At that time, I was you know around 12 or 13 mm. years old. So, relatively late but still <laughs> early for any no, 12 kind of, is yeah. fairly early yeah. i mean yeah, yeah and it was the, the 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 sad part is it was really at the wrong time because it was right after the the uh, the iraqi uh, you know ah, invasion yes, yes, and yes. there was absolutely you know no clubs no trainers no horses mm. so i really didn't have anywhere to go and yeah. uh, the only club i went to was the hunting and equestrian club and mm. It was basically not in the best condition. Yeah. So even my start was a little bit of, uh, of, of, of a struggle. What made you want to get into horse riding in the first place? I've always been passionate first about, about animals. And mm, then okay. uh, the, my love came to horses. Of course, there's always these like cartoon elements, you know, and uh, I saw you know, a couple of, uh, of movies as, mm. uh, as, as a kid. And somehow, I mean, there was a movie, mm. that, it's called The Black Stallion, and it was then it's it was aired, it was uh, broadcast at 1979 mm. so i saw it of course a few years later right. and since that time it got stuck in my head i've always loved animals but horses yeah. were something else just grabbed your attention yeah it's I one just, thing to love pets owning pets yeah, yeah. it's another thing to want to actually jump exactly. into uh, yeah i love i love like horses I, how, how was the move like into, from someone that was passionate about watching mm-hmm. um, these mm-hmm. a- movies and then to someone that's now practicing or I'm just yeah being into this just yeah. starting it and any backlash from friends or family i would have to say that none of uh of any any, any of the members of the family have anything to do with horses and this mm. was the you know very the, first yeah, generation yeah, horse riding the, the everybody yeah. you know never knew where i got it from so my it grandfather my grandfather however um was into racing and he used to take me as a kid with him mm. okay and uh but me in, in person, I always loved horses. And then <clears throat> even as a student, I read like, uh, I know this is gonna sound funny, but when in, in the early nineties in school, they had this uh, article about three ladies that won the Asian game medals, gold, yeah. silver, and bronze. And they were the, 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 the Kuwaiti riders and they were all oh. ladies and it was, they won yeah, it in 1982. And something clicked in that moment and i'm like okay i love horses i love riding so why now why i want to I do next... show jumping <laughs> i love it so why can't i be the next story next kind of champion thing? yeah because i mean there's so many disciplines related to, to horses you have mm. dressage you have show jumping you have eventing you have endurance uh, that's so interesting yeah so i i went to show jumping and 
It was just uh, I started then and I never stopped until today. So what is it? What is it? Jumping is like uh, obstacle course. Yes, horses. this is where you have fences and you uh, you yes, jump them in the ring. Yeah. And is it measured by sp what, by speed or by the difficulty Accuracy. of the? Accuracy of how do you, how do you, some, yeah, how do you get points? It's it's a little bit complicated for people who don't jump, but in our uh, in, in our riding world, we actually calculate the stride of a horse within a course. So every four human steps, which is 3.7 meters, is one horse step. Oh my God. And then they yeah. build a horse. Okay. This is where a lot of people think show jumping. You just guide the horse to the fence, and the horse does everything <laughs> itself. It's absolutely not. It's really. It's complicated. Is it teamwork or is it more on you than the horse? It's absolutely teamwork. Teamwork. And yeah. you have to be in harmony with your horse because wow. sometimes you ask the horse for a distance and he's like, no, this is too far or this is too close. So how do you develop that communication with the horse, that connection? There's so, so many aids that you use to communicate with the horse. You know, there's the hand, there's the weight, there's the voice, um, uh, there's the leg and, and the kick. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, I wouldn't recommend kicking, but I mean... I mean, that little side kick they do. Yeah, it's, it's more of, of, of a squeeze because yeah, yeah. Uh, you have no idea how much sensitive horses are. They're absolutely... That's what they all say, but they're very emotional yeah. uh, animals and you should yes. really be careful how you very, treat them. Very, very yes. fast. Especially with the mares. They say with the mares, it's even more difficult to deal with the mare. It's like yeah, in, a human, uh, in a human life, you know, the, mm. the, the, the mares, which is the female, is always much more difficult and you have to deal in a delicate way and um, you, you know you have to be firm when you need to and uh, and you have to ask know exactly how much you should ask and when not to ask wow. so it's this is the beauty about the sport it's never the same every day it's every day is a completely different scenario whether in the ring whether yeah. in your everyday riding I mean, you know, I mean, they say when you when you have a, a dog, it's like a pet that you can. If, the younger you get the dog, yeah. the, the more the better the experience you have with it, the relationship yeah, with them. Yeah. Is it the same with horses that you have to get him or her very very young, at a very young age to build that connection over the years? It's recommended that when you buy a young horse, of course, you develop a much uh, stronger bond. Mm, yeah. However, if it's a rider that just started riding, is yeah. is not recommended to buy a young horse because. This young horse actually needs somebody to educate them. properly. So if you have two, horse, yeah, yeah, if you have two amateurs two and two amateurs. beginners, mm. then that's not going to work. So one of knows. them has so to then be a veteran horse with an amateur would be a better. This is the best fit. Mm. If if you have somebody who just started riding, you need something that's more experienced. Experience. And if you have a young horse, you definitely need an experienced rider to show them uh, how yeah. things are done. So you must have one special horse for yourself, like one a horse that you. Your ride or die. <laughs> I'm. I mean, because I'm a girl, every horse, I have an extreme attachment to it. I actually never sold a horse. Um, they always stay with me, you know. How many, so. many horses? <laughs> I'm so curious. Because you're talking about one yeah. of many horses. How yeah. many horses do you own? Now? Yeah. I have uh, four now. Oh, wow. um, one is, uh, is, is competing. Let's say it's an active show jumping horse. One is a very young horse, so she needs one more year before she's into the sport. Okay. I have one retired horse. And one that is a breathing mare, which uh, I'm expecting it. a filly, inshallah, in boys, April. Boys, girls, the horses? Um, three boys and one, uh, no, two two uh, females and one male. Uh, two you, males and two females. Have you given them names? Um, the three already have names. The, the three-year-old, until now, I didn't name her. I'm just so picky when it comes to name, and I wanted to see her character a little bit more to give her a name that nice. suits her best. See, I'm curious about, uh, the from the four horses, a retired horse. So yes. how do you, I mean, I'm assuming a retired horse is a horse that just stopped. <laughs> yes, it stopped. He's retired. Stopped yeah, 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 you're right. But yeah. like, how do you judge if a horse has stopped? Oh, yeah. this is the right time to retire a horse. Yes, yes. How for me, you know um, for me, a lot of people um, sadly push their horses yeah. over their over limits. Over the limits. And so when, how do you? For me, yeah, for me, this was the not the case. When I see a horse is unable to perform mm to the level that um, he's comfortable yeah. with yeah. or that the injuries reoccur, uh, yeah. you know, every yeah. once in a while, then I listen to the horse's body and it's asking me to stop. There are horses actually that are, let's say, 12 years old, which is at their peak, but mm. they're not, you know, they've been used and overused and abused and they don't even continue their career. And there yeah. are horses, like I saw in the Asian Games, 21 years old. And uh, what's the average life expectancy of yeah. horses? I would say if, um, Let's say a 20-year-old horse is like a 60-year-old, uh, you human. know, human being. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So they live. They live they about live, 20, 30 years. Yeah, they live. Yeah, some of them live until the 25. Ponies live until over 30 years old. Ponies oh, live sure. a lot longer than uh, than the horses. Wow.
Um, and what's um, you know, all of your horses? You've had them ever since they were basically born. Um, no, not all, not uh, all of them. Some of them I did. Um, okay. But um, you know, two of the or three of the four that I've mentioned to you are already bought when they were uh, more more experienced. And I have uh, one three year old uh, filly that was born actually yeah. with me as an owner. And then I'm expecting another one, like I said, in April. So nice. We're, we're not. We don't even know if it's a, a female or a male, but oh. let, whatever. As long as it's a healthy, yeah. it's a healthy. Baby. It's a healthy. Yeah. yeah. So interesting, you know. Even I'm, I'm going to always refer back to dogs because that's my. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, don't I'm worry, so sorry. No but in dogs, we also talk talk a lot about breeds. You know, yeah. we always mm -hmm. think of a certain breed. That they're like want. different types. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm honestly, I I mean, horses are very beautiful. But I'm sure there's okay. different breeds of horses. Of yeah. course. Um, for us in show jumping, we we're, we're always um, we would call them like. Um, you know, warm blunts and they're the European horses. They're yeah. ones that are built strong with, you know, thick bones and mm. uh, very powerful hind legs because this is what you need for jumping. Mm. Um, it's very rare, I would say almost never, that you see an Arabian, you know, uh, perform at the highest levels because, of course, there's that breed, the, the Arabian horses. Yeah. Um, there are, of course, the, the thoroughbreds, the ones that are used for racing. Mm. Uh, the endurance ones are usually a mix between yeah. the two. So each breed is, um, is, is famous to perform best in you know, a certain field. Of course, there's okay. the carriage horses. They're even bigger and bulkier right. and m much more stronger. So, so in our case, we, the Europeans are you know, the German, yeah, the, the Belgian, the, the, the Dutch. Yeah, these are the, these are the horses, the French. These are the horses that we, we look for. So, yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah, right. You're right yeah. The question I have, the you know how in UFC or sports, you have to lose certain weight, you have to battle against certain similar weights. Yes. Uh -huh. So is that the same in horses? Like, I mean, obviously it wouldn't be fair Categories, if I get the yeah. strongest horse to compete with an Arabian horse, for example. Uh, what criteria is like? Is there a criteria? Yeah, if they're speed, if they're racing horses, they're in different. Yes, category. they're in different then, classes. In, yeah. in 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 show jumping, there are um, there are classes for the riders levels. The riders. So levels. there's like the experience, the, yeah. and then the young ones, and then the amateurs. You yeah. know, they have okay. they have classifics, and then so a class. More on the riders than the horses. And there are there horses are. classes too. So okay. there are like a you know four year old young horses classes, and then mm -hmm. five year olds, and then six year olds, and then and then once they reach their their adult life, then you go by height you know there's a the 130 centimeter 140 in the olympics and the and the world uh, you know uh, equestrian games they reach 160 165 oh centimeter yeah it's um i'm curious about speed how fast have you gone on a horse basically in show jumping it's not really about speed well, not the show jumping have you done the speed races as well no <laughs> you you don't do speed you need races. a completely different uh different. figure by the way for, oh, for speed yeah you have okay. to be like not i think it's not over 45 or 50 i'm not sure exactly but they're really you can see them they're short they're really slim and these jockeys the riders or the, the riders yeah okay. the, the jockeys okay. they stand on very short stirrups it's a completely different kind of riding than why do than, you need to be a small frame to be a speed racer perhaps the weight then the horse can run faster uh, <laughs> you're perhaps more streamlined uh, you're yeah. lighter yeah, yeah, the horse, has to, uh, the horse has to run faster, so you need yeah. somebody who's light on your... In, nice. in show jumping, you do see a few stocky riders, you know, so <laughs> it's not really... It's better to have light weights as right. a show jumper, right. but it's not a requirement like in, nice. in, in the jockey. In jockey, actually, there are some races where they add weights, you know, when the more the horse wins, they there are some classes where they add a weight okay. to, to, mm -hmm. to a saddle. So One more question before we wrap up the segment and go to the other segment, yeah. because we're going to talk about competition segment, yeah. second segment. What was the last competition you were part of? I just came last month from uh, Spain. I was in uh, in Oliva. It's, it's, it's a, a little town next to Valencia. Mm -hmm. And uh, my horse was off for seven months due to injury. And this was my first show as a comeback. So I just yeah. did, you know, small classes and nice. I did four schooling rounds and it went really well. It was the first time for me to compete in Spain, actually. I love it. This is probably how we're going to pick it up. We're going to pick this up in the second segment. Good and job. we're just going on a short break. We'll be right back. And we're back on Beyond Told with our special guest, Ala. How's it going so far? Loving good, the good. Interview. Yeah, it's really flowing it's, good. Yeah. So, you are a champion in horse riding. You've had so many competitions. 
tell us about these experiences, how you, how you prepare, how you get ready for a competition, the, the medals you won. Um, to be honest and with all uh, humble modesty, I would say that I have probably only reached near 50% of what I hope for as a rider. Wow. If you ask every rider's uh, you know, yeah. dream, it's to be in the Olympics and, and the Olympics. this is something, yeah, with this sport, I would say it's really difficult, not because the, the Kuwaitis don't have the level required, mm. but the horses that you need yeah. to compete at that level, wow. you're talking about millions of euros worth Wait, of How much horses. do these horses cost? I mean, if you're, there are some people who, for example, can't afford to buy these horses. So what do they do? They breed a lot of horses. Let's yeah. say they breed a hundred horse and hope one of them is going to be the star. And then there are people who can afford it and or countries that support these riders. Give me a rough, rough uh, figure. Oh, if you're going to the Olympics, you yeah, know, if I'm and, going and to the Olympics, bike, and I'm getting the best horse. <laughs> if you if you wake up in the morning and you say, okay, I'm going yeah. in a year to the Olympics, and you're gonna buy that horse. Yeah you're looking at not less than two to three million euros two to three million euros. Uh, affordable affordable I mean, no? if you want Just to compete million, maybe, <laughs> roughly, maybe it's like wow. i mean again if we go back to the details that you yeah. know a lot of people don't know there's a horse that you can buy that you can go from start to finish line and maybe knock six or seven fences on the way oh. these are not going to cost as much but if yeah. you're in the olympics you should be there to compete 100 percent. you should have the best Yes, I mean, it's going to be difficult to have the best, it's but at least that you have a chance to, you best. know, yeah. finish finish the round in a, let's say, in a presentable way. Mm. So um, if you want that horse that's going to give you a chance to at least try to compete, you know, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and not have, you know, the, all the, you can buy a horse that has all the fences down for like, exactly. you know, 200,000 euros or whatever. So is and it then, the genetics that helps the horse or is it the rider training the horse and the collaboration they have? that turns them into a successful pair. Believe me, even if you're the Lionel Messi of of, of, oh, of, of horse riding and you don't have the horse, that's the gonna, right horse. you need the horse. You, you can be the, right the best, the right you can be the best. I can give, I mean, there's the, you know, world uh, champion like Henrik von Eckermann, he's, he's Swedish. If I wake up and I, and I say, okay, Henrik, Here's one of my horses. Go to the Olympics tomorrow, and he is an Olympic, mm. you know, medalist. Exactly. He's not going to do anything. Exactly. It, it, they both have to be yeah. at top form to compete mm. at the nice. Olympics. So, in our level in Kuwait or around yeah. the Gulf, we have the horses that can jump that height. But when you go to the Olympics, that's a completely different game. You're competing. There's only a few, a few Arabic countries that went actually to the Olympics. Not all of the mm. uh, Kuwait has never been to the Olympics, and uh, in terms a lot of, of horse riding. Yeah, in terms of show jumping or any any discipline, they've been to the Asian Games. Yeah. Actually, they they won medals in the Asian Games, nice. and the last Asian Game gold medalist is a Kuwaiti rider. Nice. And I was there to witness it. Yeah, I and Al Flafi, he 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 did he did amazing. So the Asian Games, we we are in that level. However, the Olympics, there is no uh, Kuwaiti rider or horse that can yeah. compete mm -hmm. at that level. Question about the horses. Well, of course, it's very difficult kind of riding a horse and competing. But how do you maintain? So to, to make sure that it's always at the top level and well fed. It's not like a car engine, but I mean, you know. this is yeah, this is uh, this is a, this is an excellent question. There's an advice I always give, and I mean, I get so many parents calling me. Yeah. We want to get you know the our kid a horse. We want to buy them a horse, and I tell them, it's you know, guys. I mean, a pet is a big responsibility. 100%. A horse is even more because it's not something where if you're bored of, you, like a tennis racket, where you can just park it, you know, no, 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 in no. the garage, and you know, or or a car. So unless you're a hundred percent ready for this responsibility, it's an animal that has to go out every day. Oh, it's no. an animal that has to be maintained to perf to be able to perform at at best level. It's a right. It's a it's an animal that you have to understand the signs that mm. the animal tells you mm. if th this animal needs something because they don't speak you know yeah, if they're course. not performing at their top if they're doing you know some um, different behavior or odd behavior in the stable you have to catch these signs as a rider and that's you know, so get interesting them. Yeah. to be able to look at an animal and understand and their eyes the tear up don't they <laughs> The eyes do up, don't they? Like they, 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 yeah. they, they, they speak they're not as puppy in, eyes, I have to say. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, a horse, even in the ring, like for me, even for me as a rider, mm. you can jump five or four fences out of twelve. 
and you know something's wrong with that horse and yeah. a lot of riders just raise up their hand and and retire you know the, 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 there are these signs that the horse gives you that you know i'm not feeling well it's not my day you know i'm feeling pain somewhere or i'm just not in the mood or i'm scared of something and this is why not every, everybody can actually ride a horse but not everybody can be a horseman mm. true mm -hmm. that's true you can jump on a horse and someone help you ride around i've done that yeah. <laughs> but i can't control a horse like the way you yeah, do it's, it's, curious about uh, more about you as a person perhaps like i mean someone that's uh, this brave and you're choosing a very can we call it a dangerous sport can we can, well, it is, can it we, is, can it we is call, sport. Can we talk about yeah. the safety it is aspect dangerous. exactly safety and how do you ensure safety any injuries any funny incidents you want to mention oh well, my please God. talk about safety first <laughs> yeah um, I think. The interesting part now about the industry is that they are just continuing to produce all of these safety um, elements that help the rider have, let's say, a somewhat safe experience. Now they have these like inflatable vests that mm. even some people um, with motorbikes right. use it. If you crash, and you tie it. Uh, yeah, you tie it to the inflates, saddle, and yeah. once the rider is off the saddle, and inflates, it and inflates. it's like a trend now. Everybody. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? To me, it's a good thing. Okay, a lot good. of people are, yeah. are are using it, and it's like yeah, and the, you know, fire in the in the forest. It's just spreading. This is a good thing. It is. Yeah. The safety helmets are just yeah. getting. You know, safer and safer. The safety stirrups. Mm. Um, you know, the, the the ones that bend to release that your legs don't get caught. I mean, there are they're just continuing on on research. Innovations, innovation, innovation. Yeah, and I, um, I mean, any for incidents me, you've had? Yeah, actually, I, yeah, I, ten years ago, I had a really. I mean, as a rider, they say the more you fall, the you know, you learn. learn. Yeah, the you learn it, and, and you come back stronger actually. But that's some about fault. everything in life. Yeah, yeah one. It's, one incident I have actually 10 years ago, which is, let's say, funny and sad at the same time. Okay. I won the class. I was the winner of the class mm. and I won it. Okay. And in the prize giving ceremony, I took my cup. And this is when bad management comes into place. They, they shut off the lights and start fireworks. And I'm on the horse's back. And my horse. The horse re leaped, reaction to the oh fireworks. leaped like three or four meters in the air. Oh my God. While you're on I top of it. Yeah, I flipped, you know, backwards Whoa. and I landed on my shoulder. Were you wearing any protective four, gear? You, that, at that time, there was no vest. And I had wow. four fractures and I had Oof. to be in therapy for Physical six therapy. to nine months. I went to Germany. It was a wow. really bad fracture. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, it was and it really, wasn't really even bad. like a mistake you did It was after winning. Competing. Yes. <laughs> it had nothing to do with the competition. It's just... Yeah, this Winning. was. Yeah, that, to me, this was the worst, uh, the worst fall. Oh my God, that was very intense. So and really, uh, the managers there. That was a that was a mess up on this their. This is end. when you hand um, management for when it's somebody who has, knows nothing knows about horses. Yeah, you know, exactly. Events manager, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna press the people, and then there yeah. goes the ride. They're flying off. You know, it's uh, this is why um, in the European uh, uh, side of the world. Mm. Usually, the the people who are handling events are all horse people, so horse they know yeah, yeah. what to do, what not to do. Now it's it's getting much better. Yeah, um, region. Yeah, because now there's a federation, and they're they're more yeah, of control yeah, now yeah, of, yeah. Of, of of the horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time, it was it was really very unfortunate, and mm -hmm. even even during therapy, like this guy, you know, the doctor, yeah. you know, Germans, they're like. <laughs> and he's like, you're never going to ride again. And he's oh, starting to weep, you know? That's and just to make you motivated to get back. No, he actually meant oh, it. Oh, he believed and, that? And he then, meant it. Yeah, kind of, because I, yeah, it, it was... That puts uh, you down, right? Because yeah, obviously you had such a huge yeah. passion for this. And suddenly someone's telling you that, listen, you're going to have to take a break now. And um, that's intense. But it was really, uh, I mean, when he saw the x-ray. And yeah. because of the mobility of the hand, which is still not 100%, yeah. you, he said... You know, you have to forget about it because you cannot raise your hand as high as you think. But here you are. Here you are today. Here you are today. Yeah, I mean, enough, enough for horse riding. But if it was tennis and volleyball, no, I, mean, <laughs> I yeah, I can't, unfortunately. All right. What well, beautiful uh, experiences you've had on those horses. What do you aspire to accomplish? The Olympics, right? That is the biggest goal. I mean, I wish, I wish, uh, I wish I can have the opportunity somehow with uh, you know with enough training and if, yeah. if i have the I mean, right there's a path to the olympics there is a path and i mean you have to be realistic too huh if you're uh, if you're an employee like all the years i was you know a full-time employee yeah, yeah, yeah. and i only had yeah. like a two two years break you in all my balance. life yeah. you you it's can get, balance, and it's, it's 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 a sport where you have to be continuously competing i mean in kuwait six months there's nothing in summer 
the season mm. stops, so there's no competition. So exactly. if a rider needs to go to the Olympics, these six months, you have to he be has active to be somewhere yeah. else. They have abroad. to be yeah. abroad, yeah. They have but to that, be abroad. But that, that means that you as a person need to be such a hustler that you're kind of like chasing this. What, 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 what is it that built this character in you? Is it studying abroad, being abroad? What, how, how are you? For me, in, in, in person, I can never imagine myself without the sport. I mean, I breathe it. I, 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 I mean, even during, even during school, um, everybody, you know, on their weekends were gathering. And for me, even without a car, I, I would be on the bus for like 45 minutes and then get up, put on the rollerblades and like rollerblade for another half an hour to reach a lesson. And the whole, the, the, the journey that took me to reach the lesson is actually longer, longer than, than the lesson, than the lesson itself. itself. But I mean, I, I, I had to ride. It, it's just. Um, it's addictive, I have to say. A I real, think, a real, yeah. a real horse rider and a real, uh, you know, equestrian. Usually, they don't quit the sport. And this is my life. The whole, uh, all the sacrifices I've made, whether yes. they're, you know, personal related mm. or work related, mm. it's just to be in that. Uh, life. I love it, honestly. You know, I, I've been honestly on a horse once, right? And uh, <laughs> that was in Egypt, uh, and it was beside the pyramids. Oh, this should be experience. This should be So no, no. It's, <laughs> so this is what happens. You see the fireworks experience that you had? Yes. Something similar. I was on the horse yes. beside the pyramids, and then the guy that was uh, riding. No, no. He 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 thought I was an expert. So he whistles at the horse and the horse goes mental. So I was running and I've never been on a horse. I could feel my back break. And that's yeah. when I appreciated that you better take lessons if you want to get on a horse. Yeah, this is and major. the horse started running with you on a Running, 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 running. They running. always do it in Egypt, around, yeah. Around the <laughs> pyramids. Around the pyramids, right? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, but what I'm trying to say is that, yes, although it was very scary, I also felt it was very liberating. I felt free. Mm -hmm. You know, just like being on a bike, you know, they say it's a free feeling. So does it really feel free for you like what, because you said you 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 travel longer than the whole class yes. you know so how does it feel being on the horse to me i have to say it's the best place to, for me to be i mean can you describe it for us what does that feel i mean what is i mean there's the, the, the sayings that the 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 the, the arabs say before that mm. um one of three of god's blessing to a human being is mm -hmm. um a good wife, a cutting sword, and a purebred horse. Wow, wow. And, uh, purebred <laughs> horse. And I mean, the, 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 there are endless hadiths and, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, say in, in the Quran the about the, 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 the goodness in, in, in a horse. So for me, the best place to be. And there's a saying also, Annie, uh, that the, the best place to be is, yeah. is, is on the saddle. And I can't imagine my life Without. Uh, without it and um, um, what you mentioned is very important because now in social media we see all these crazy clips about people putting kids on horses yeah must be. Mm -hmm. you know they're, they're galloping in the street they're mm -hmm. galloping in the yeah, desert yeah. You know, horses flipping on on people you right. really have to know it's liberating for somebody who knows exactly. what they're who doing, knows what they're doing. Know what yeah, you can you yes. can gallop with a horse mm -hmm. on the beach or in the desert when you know what you're doing, it's a very liberating experience. However, if if I see now, you know, in winter, you see all these people standing with horses and, you know, chubbed or... Yeah, or, yeah they don't know what they're doing at all. These horses, God knows, they mm. might be, you know, mental or abused. Mm. And, and this horse mm. can... The thing about horse riding, it's a sport that can kill you. It's not ping pong, you know, where you actually yeah. accidentally hit the table and that's the worst that you can do. You can... You can you can die from horse riding, True. and you can. Seems like that's something you're advocating seriously, yeah. and I love that you're advocating for the safety of horse riding. Yes. We're about to wrap up our interview, but before we leave this, could you like share any pieces of advice to aspiring horse riders, young people that are into horse riding? Anything you'd like to share? Um, um, yes, of course. Uh, for me, I highly recommend riders who are just starting their. Yeah. Um, let's say passion about horse riding mm. don't rush in buying a horse don't rush you have to wait a few years until you're hundred percent sure this is actually something that you want to do Invest the, in. you want to dedicate yeah, there, your are, life there are to people that ride you know the, the, their kids ride for six months and a year and then they're like oh we want to buy a horse and yeah don't rush wait if you're really committed and you see that in a few years you're actually still in the sport and committed on daily basis then think of buying a, a horse. buying a horse Amazing. and uh, it's it's i mean even personally for me it's a non yeah. non uh, stopping experience actually i wanted to mention that i even went to the education part of horse yeah. riding that i took all these international certificates exactly. you, to you do you went it. you you literally dove right into it like you jumped all into it 
Yeah. So, Lovely. Uh, that's awesome. Well, Ala, thank you for your time. If anyone can make it in the Olympics, you can. Thank Believe you. in yourself. Keep hopefully, doing what you're doing. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I think one day you will represent us. Thank you so Olympics. much. I wish Inshallah, thank you. Thanks. We'll be back with a wrap up. We're back to wrap up this beautiful segment. Wow. Um, when is your next turn to be on a horse? Um, I did try it. You know, our producer is very involved in horse riding. Yeah, She's yeah. actually pretty good at it. Uh, we went together one time, and we even did it for a different show. I got on top of a horse. Uh, there's a guide, of course. I'm expecting a funny story. Uh, right the now. funny thing is me trying to get on top of the horse. <laughs> That is the funny stuff. <laughs> it was a very challenging uh, thing to do, but I got it done. <laughs> and then we didn't air that episode. <laughs> for, dif for different reasons. That's determination <laughs> yes, and yes. consistency. Yeah. And that's what we learned today, right? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for the beautiful, funny, interesting story. I hope you get on a horse one day. And we hope to see our beautiful guest on in, at the Olympics one day. Yes. And thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.